when I'm out of paper and I have no sketchbook pages left to fill, I tend to go for my little vintage books and put white gesso on the pages. And it's just what I need with a little touch of black ink and throwing in some dendrite prints and little touches of collage paper pieces. Also inspired by some vintage typography and old vintage magazines and even graffiti I've seen around town and also some homemade watercolors I've been working on recently. So all these are getting thrown in the mix today in this session. Not to mention the vibes of my turtle, which I just found recently, this poor little guy crossing the busy street here in my town that I live in. And I don't know how I hit, didn't hit him with my car, but I wanted to introduce him to you. He's just adorable and I'm just doing my best to keep him alive. So let's get going today. So these vintage books are Italian books I found in the market and I've been kind of saving them for a rainy day, which turns out is today. Today is the day I'm going to be using them and it is raining out. It's lovely. It's so fresh out. My few begonias that I'm keeping alive as well. It's just the perfect timing to cover these little guys up with some white gesso, just simple white gesso layers right over the pages and I've lined underneath a little bit of plastic so it doesn't soak through to the other side. And I'll put down a layer here and, and let it dry in a little bit, but I just, it will be nice to just use this book as a place to experiment, warm up, um, try new materials, and that's what I hope to be doing here soon. One of the materials I'm gonna be taking a look at was gifted to me just recently here by Jean Oliver. Jean Oliver is an amazing artist, just entrepreneur person. I don't know if you know her stuff, but I was able or honored to be able to offer one of my courses on her site. And she came through Florence recently with her husband and I was able to go around with her and show her some of my places to eat and take a look at different things. And we had fun going to vintage market and all this kind of stuff. It was a great day. And she gifted me these gorgeous pastel cigar type form things that are super fun to play with powdery buttery soft by Seymour Wallace or Wallace Seymour let me let me just make sure I'm saying this right here is it Wallace Seymour it is Wallace Seymour and she sells them exclusively on her site and she gifted me a few of these and I was just wanted to take this chance to play around with them and see how they react with these handmade watercolors I've been making yes I have been going a little bit turbo lately even though the universe says slow down turtle mode, I am in rabbit mode where I'm kind of doing a million things all over the place. So I have been making handmade watercolors and I just wanted to test them out today and see how they're gonna react on these gesso pages, mixing them in with the graphite um, cigar sticks and just have some fun with it and let myself make mistakes or whatever the heck that means. I don't even know, just make a mess. Yeah, make a mess basically is what I was doing. A beautiful mess. On just a, just going on a little bit more about my watercolor experiments, I'm trying to develop some watercolors that really excite me. I'm having a good time and actually feeling pretty strong about the colors that I'm developing, but I'm still not quite where I wanna be in terms of the watercolors, how they're reacting, how they're drying. And so I, I still have a lot to figure out, but I'm getting there. Uh, the ones you see on my palette, this kind of palish, not pale, it's actually quite vibrant, kind of purplish blue, and then this turquoise blue, they are by Artsy Oubliette, one of my favorite artisan watercolor providers. And she's always a big inspiration for me, and I, I just adore hers. I also love black ink, and I'm adding in touches of that. I have. A, actually an obsession with black ink where I make it out of vine charcoal from the vines locally and I've even written a little book about it. You can find that over on my Etsy shop. So I don't know, I'm just having fun with this little book that didn't have a home, it didn't have a purpose, but now I'm feeling with some white gesso, it can become something else. It really is a rainy day moment where I've just been saving these books for years it seems and they've been sitting under tables and in boxes and I'm like why don't I just gesso these pages I don't have any paper I don't have any scrap paper my sketch books are full so take a look at this they can actually take quite a little bit of liquid um, again it will help if you put some plastic between the pages I probably should do that and I will hear when they dry but just using a little bit of my graphite 
pencil. I think it's an art graph one and just making little touches of things and just letting myself go really and using it almost as a warm up to make a mess and have fun with it. So this is the what it looks like on the outside. You can see it's a hardback. And I think for this one, I'm going to experiment with just putting in some dendrite prints. I did that little washi tape tutorial recently, but I like to make the prints themselves. I mean, I love washi tape and I probably could just add pieces in here, which I should, but I wanted to just put some dendrite patterns just right in the pages, something bold, something to work with initially. So I'm squishing some acrylic ink between two sheets of plexiglass and I'm gonna slowly take it apart and it creates this kind of tree pattern which is so fun and gives it kind of a coral undersea water look. And I'm just going to take my pages and carefully kind of blot them onto this, this uh, relief that is is the are these dendrite patterns some of them come up um, a little easier some of them are going to have to be pushed in a little bit more but I'll just move the book around slowly and see which direction they're pointing and see how I like to, to add them in and just allow myself to take it easy no mistakes no mistakes here just going on intuition and feeling and and mood and See how it goes. I'm also going to take advantage of the fact that I have this acrylic ink dendrite pattern right in front of me. I don't want to really waste this paint or this pattern because it's really nice and I'm just going to press some onto some copy paper, just normal paper, and set it aside for maybe incorporating into these journals or using it in another project. But I do like to just take advantage and always pull a few extra prints if I have the chance. And as much as I love these big black shapes on the substrate here on these pages. I'm adding a little bit of gesso just to kind of incorporate it. Whoops, there you go. I can see it's still not dry and I'm gonna try and fix it and I just kind of make it worse by making it more cloudy. And so what do I do? I can just add more gesso over the top. That's the, that's the fun of it if I want to. And actually I don't even mind the gray. It's kind of lovely. It starts this really nice, base for me to to make marks with and I'm going to set this aside and let it dry a little bit and take out these vintage papers that I have because I've been thinking I really miss this type just vintage fonts and vintage words that these are from an old Italian magazine so I'm just going to cut some words out and have them aside while these are drying and find some interesting look there's a little frog in here who's playing tennis he's so cute these anyway i just love these vintage letters and fonts and could be kind of fun to to throw this in there as well so i'm going to cut some of these shapes out and just set them aside with my other pieces you can see over to the corner there i have some suminagashi prints set aside and some old dendrites that i had from another project that seemed to kind of go well with these neutral colors just cutting up pieces while they're drying and and see, so they're just ready for me when I'm ready to go. So I'm ripping up some sumonagashi. In case you missed that, I did do a tech, uh, tutorial, excuse me, on these techniques. You can check those out. And um, I also am a big fan of jelly printing. I love incorporating it with copper leaf and vintage papers and just little making little patterns. So I'll be ripping up some of these today too and just have them by my side just in case I think that I need these little elements tucked into this composition and just something fun to play with. And of course, the thing I need to glue it all together is some matte medium, which I have here by Pabeo. And I'm just kind of putting it down with a little brush and just starting to randomly stick down little bits and bobs and pieces and papers and going over it with graphite pencil and little art graph pencils when I just feel the urge. More gesso 
Again, just using it to just grab and take and put things down and let it get messy. And while that one's drying, I'm just gonna pull out this other book because I did just sew two books and it's just nice because you get in this flow, you know, and you just don't wanna stop. So I always try and have enough paper or sketchbook pages, or in this case, vintage book pages with gesso on them ready for me because just one page is not gonna be enough. Once I get the, the setup going, the flow going, I'm gonna to wanna to keep going and paint. And in this case today, I'm really diving in deep into these blacks and the black inks and the dendrite prints and just really enjoying myself. So one of the things that really inspires me to keep going is kind of this quest to have this feeling of excitement when I'm doing something. And it's mixed a little bit with courage and taking that stroke that I feel like maybe I shouldn't have taken. A lot of the times it doesn't turn out and it turns into a big mess. But sometimes you just get it right and it just is kind of like this breakthrough moment. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm having one exactly right now, but it does kind of feel like I'm going in that direction with this black ink and I'm just going to keep going with it and making a little bit bolder strokes, bigger strokes, because it feels good. It's like, oh my gosh, that's exciting. What can I do here? What can I add? to keep that feeling going for me. So what I'm doing is just going with the flow and adding more black because that's what I love. Of course, you can really overdo it with black pretty quickly, but I was discovering, or and, and I am continuing to discovering how good it feels to make these big black bold marks and even adding in some white gesso again, covering it up, getting it to mix a little bit. But again, it was going with this black. It just kind of came out of nowhere in the sense that I was just gonna use little graphites and pencils and chalk and then going in a direction that I wouldn't normally go and it felt good. So that's a wonderful thing about these books is that you got 150 pages, you can have a, a few breakthrough moments. And I'm not saying this was like, woo, genius or anything, but it just felt good. So of course I had to take my other one and add some more touches there. And just, I just thought, I'm gonna go for this. I'm gonna go for some bigger strokes and just see how it feels. And it felt so good. I was like, oh, dang, I needed to make a bigger shape there. And yes, that felt right. And it took some little strokes to get there, but eventually like taking a bigger stroke just felt so darn good. And I have to say, one of the things that I think really helped me get there was just, using this little book as kind of a warm-up and nothing special, nothing fancy, not a fancy expensive sketchbook or paper, but something I could just do and paint page after page and it didn't really matter. It takes, takes the pressure off. So I hope that you got something out of this today and taking the pressure off yourself because we all really need to do that right now. And I hope to see you back here soon.